Thank you very much, Brother Daniel. Let us bow our heads just a moment for prayer. Gracious Father, we come into thy divine presence now to offer to thee the thanksgiving and to express to thee the very adoration of our hearts, for truly we adore thee. And we would ask that your blessing come to us tonight in the further part of this service. Let the unsaved, Lord, see the place that they're living to pay. Flee to the cross for refuge. And may those who are not walking upright before you, those professing to be your children, may they become altogether ashamed of their character as they profess to be children of God and live a life that's full of reproach. We would ask tonight that you would remember the sick and the afflicted that you're in divine presence along with others that's around the world. Heal the sick tonight, Lord. Bring to us the joy that we are looking for. And those who are wayfaring men and women along life's journey, some of them, Lord, have been on the field for a long time. Not one thing have they ever did for thy glory that hid from you. You remember every little deed and every heartache and everything that they suffered for the kingdom's sake. And someday they shall receive that great reward when the crowns will be given out. We would ask thee tonight to encourage those people. And may we buckle up the, the armor of God just a little tighter tonight. Go forward and battle tomorrow. Where right and wrong is engaged. May we not fear as we go, but know that the morning star is shining over us. And if God be for us, who shall be against us? Or who shall touch the anointed of the Lord? May that be the consolation of every believer. Grant it, Lord. And as we are about to turn back the pages of thy sacred and holy writing that we call the Bible, give us the Potion tonight, Lord, in the scriptures that would take care of these requests that we are asking for. Anoint the reading of the word and the preaching of the word. May the Holy Spirit get into the word and into the preacher and into the audience that we would even forget where we are at that the Holy Spirit would have us so under control that God would be magnified. Glory would be gotten to his name. Grant these blessings, Father, as we further wait on thee. In Jesus' blessed holy name we ask it. Amen. Just for a small portion of your time, I'm sure that you would be blessed if you should go from the building now to your homes, the reading of the words or the songs that we have heard, that you'd be blessed. I was helped up just a little tonight on the road over. There's been an accident on the bridge. Now, just waited for Billy to come up and see if they were ready for me. And I was praying because some of the people that had been included in the accident were, looked like to me, Christian people. And they, and they were 
the policemen were making a squall. No one seemed to be seriously hurt, but just moving us on. And we were delayed just a little. If it be that some of our dear brothers and sisters has been caught into an accident, God deliver them from any harm. And now, tonight, I wish you to turn, if you keep down the scripture reading, in the book of the Psalm, the 63rd Psalm and the first three verses, we feel that we have chosen this tonight for our study of the Word. O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in thy sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. This is a most unusual scripture. And when I read this scripture, I was trying to think of what the prophet must be thinking of when he made this quotation. Thy loving kindness is better to me than life. I can't think of anything any better than life. You might sum up everything that you know of and every good thing that you know of. There would be nothing to take the place of life. For all things must have an end besides eternal life. And David, aware of the presence of God and how that God had blessed him, and how that he seen God in nature as he walked by the shady green pastures and down by the still waters, and the great psalmist as he wrote the psalms of where he found God in nature. If you just look around, you can see him in all nature. Oh, I love to look at God. You can see him if you just look through his eyes. Some time ago, I was herding some cattle way up on the Repertoir Forest, out on Cross Berkeley Pass in Colorado. I was up there just resting from the meetings, and I used to do a little ranching up there with another fella. And I, one day while we was on the spring roundup of bringing the cattle in, I was salting the cattle. And I wrote as I unpacked the saddle horse, and I walked up to the top of the mountain. I was just looking through my glasses to see where the cattle were getting their positions and places from the top of the mountain, and I saw an unusual sight. I saw an old mother eagle uh, taking her young ones from the nest. And I watched them just a little bit because God spoke in the Bible that he likened his people unto eagles. And how this, this old mother eagle, how she got those young ones on her wings. And she'd taken them down into a, a green pasture. And there, after laying her little ones off, she soared way up high to the highest peak that she could find. And she sit down on the rock, turning herself around, looking east, west, north, and south, to see if there was any danger. 
You know, you hear so much talking about the hawk. The hawk is no match at all to the eagle. His eyes are 50% better than the hawk. He's much faster. He can kill the hawk in attitude, an altitude as he goes up. The hawk can't follow him. The eagle's made up. God likened his prophets to eagles that soar way high, that they can see things far off coming. And as I lay there on my stomach and across the rock watching this big eagle, I studied her as that great big head began to turn and look, those piercing eyes watching all around. I thought, yes, that's right. That little eaglet was born in a nest. And oh, if you were ever around one of their nests, it smells terrible. And it's made out of sticks and briars and padding with rabbit skin and sheep skin, if she can find it. But when she gets ready to stir up that nest, she throws all of that out and makes it real miserable for her food. And sometimes God does that too when he stirs an ass. He makes it so miserable you don't want to stay any longer. He's stirring up the ass. But then I thought what she did after she let her little ones down in a grassy field. They've never seen green grass before. And the water's rippling by. But she took her perch way high so she could watch over those little fellows. And she wasn't too high, but what the speed of her wings could go within a, a moment's time to their rescue. I thought, no wonder David can look and see God in his nature. Jesus died that he might save us, and he's on the reports of glory and sets at the right hand of the majesty of God walking over his heritage, his brood. As the poet said, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Amen. That's not one thing can happen to you but what he knows about it. And I thought, how unconcerned those little fellows are of danger. They just got some old wing feathers and they couldn't fly. But they were tumbling over each other and pulling the grass and just having a regular Pentecostal revival. Carefully. Because they knew that mother was watching over them. And how carefree ought the children of God to be when they know that God watches over his parents. And I looked in my heart beat heavy and I take my old red handkerchief to wipe a tear of joy from my eyes as I lay quite watching them. And by and by, after they had a real good time, there come a storm. Let out a roar of the thunder. Quickly, the clouds rise. And you have to hurry to shelter one another to come because the rain comes so fast through those valleys across the top of the mountain. It's hid until it comes over the mountain all of a sudden. And she let a great scream out and down to that timber she soared like a mighty big airplane. And when she hit the ground, she let out a great big scream, and all those little eagles come, set their little feet right in her wing feathers, took their little bill and got a good tight head, and she raised with those mighty wings. And all the wind sweeping down across the top of the mountain at about 60 miles an hour, she drove herself with those little eagles into the rock of safety. Or if you just look around, you can see God everywhere. 
Someday Jesus will come before an atomic bomb can destroy his church. He will come and stretch forth his wings and his children will know his voice, that familiar cry that he gives when he leaves the rat hearts of glory and his church will be taken away on the way of his salvation. No matter how bad the destruction is, he's watching. And when I heard David here say, Thy love kindness is better to me than life. Then thinking that nothing could be any better than life, there must be another definition. Or there must be two different kinds of life. And there is two kinds of life. There's life that leads to destruction, and there's life that leads to everlasting. And this life that people think that life, the devil has perverted the real genuine life and making you think that you're really living when you're not. He tries to make you think that to have plenty of good clothes, to own a nice automobile, have the taxes paid up on your place, you're living. But you're not. That's where America is to see today. And some people think because they're having life, they're out loud reveling around. That's not life, that's death. Some time ago in a large Canadian city, I was holding a meeting. And when I'd come from the, the great arena with a lovely meeting that night, I was in this great hotel. I don't know if it had anything like it in the States. And I was going up on the elevator. And I noticed whiskey bottles laying in the elevator. And also that afternoon, there'd been a great bunch of Americans come up there. An organization, a society, a lodge, was having their annual get-together. There was about five or six hundred Americans there. And they were really having a time. When I got off out the elevator, all down in store, when you would pass, you would hear the howling and the screaming and the dancing. And they thought they were having a good time. But that kind of life lives to a place the work man wants to get rid of that type of life. They take a pistol and blow their brains out. So David couldn't have been speaking about that kind of life. It gets so miserable until people jump off of bridges. They take poison to end that life. So David could not have been speaking of that type of life. And when my elevator stopped, I heard a noise down along the hall, and I looked, and here come two American women just with their underneath clothes on. Oh, probably 28, 26, somewhere along the night years old, under 30, perhaps mothers, all oh, in an American way of thinking it, just a little clean fun. It's dirty black sin. The Bible says, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she's alive. But oh, we think that's innocent fun. It's the gates of hell. And these young women, perhaps their husbands are home playing the babysitter, while their sick and so party was having a little fun. Just as they could be with their underneath clothes on only, a bottle of whiskey in their hands, 
and man point them from room to room. Just a little clean American son. What do you think God thinks about that? And maybe a many a man there pulling these women with his innocent wife at home sitting with the baby. Just a little fun with the boss and the body. And I sat back in a little place, a little inn, and they were coming down staggering beautiful women, and they stopped and passed the bottle one to the other, pulled up the little skirt of a thing they had on their under the skirt, threw up their legs in the air and said, Whoopee, this is life. I just couldn't stand it any longer. I stepped out. I said, you're mistaken, lady. That's that. She turned and looked at me. I walked over to him. I had this very Bible in my hand. I said, I am a preacher of the gospel. And I too am an American. And you call that life? You are deceived, and the devil has deceived you. That's the road to hell and eternal separation from the presence of the living God. They looked at each other, and their make manicure, whatever you call it, stuff they put on their face, all around where they've been kissed and carried on their hair, stringing down. They looked at one another, and down the hall they went. Oh, God, be merciful to this backslidden, hypocritical nation, calling itself a Christian nation and living in tommy and rotten and sin like that. If God doesn't judge this nation for its sin, it'll, God will be just, he'll have to resurrect Tom and Gomorrah and apologize to him. We are bound for judgment. Amen. No one is putting to sail in the sky and the nations are failing. We are at the end time. God be merciful. Christ said if the word wasn't cut short for the elect that even be no flesh saved. Oh, what a miserable thing it is. The devil perverts those things. Amen. He makes you think you're living when you're dead. Now, what makes the fellow then thirst? There's some reason for that. What makes people want to drink? What makes women want to be untrue and man untrue? What makes them desire to join churches that indulge in such as card playing, cigarette smoking, and all those kind of things like that? It's because God made a man to thirst. And God made you up to thirst. That's why you do thirst. But he made you to thirst after him. That thirst was made in you to thirst after him. But the devil has perverted it and trying to make you be satisfied with trying to quit that blessed holy thing with sin. You have no right to try to quit that blessed holy thirst with drinking and waiting in sin. You remember that. God made you to thirst after him in righteousness. And the devil turns it around. Oh, there's many things he tries to quench it with. That's the reason you people don't go to church on Wednesday night no more. You'd rather stay home and look at some old dirty television. We love Susie. Oh, and then say you love God. No wonder we take heaven and bottle in America. Glory to God. 
and you got on your record machines them old dirty sounds of Elvis Presley and all that other bunch of Tennessee trash over there all shook up. You're going to be someday all shook up. Oh, Arthur Godfrey and all that Tommy Rock, you women listen to that on the morning and call yourself preachers of all those old smutty jokes trying to satisfy yourself when you ought to have your Bible open somewhere in a prayer room. Got no right to try to quench that holy thirst with the things of the world. And I'm surprised as I looked in the street a few years ago when I first started coming to the Pentecostal churches when I left the Baptist. The women used to dress like women ought to dress. But they don't anymore. What's the matter? Oh, I know this might make you just a little bit chick. When I was a little boy, I was raised up here in Kentucky. We were very poor. Black-eyed peas and cornbreads, all we had three times a day. And Mama used to get down from the old store, country store, bacon rinds. And she'd render them out to make the grease for the cornbread. And I remember every Saturday night, all the bunch of little Branham would come up to an old cedar tub and take that Saturday night bath, change the long underwear, and each one take a big dose of castor oil. I just can't stand the stuff yet. And me being the oldest, I had to take it first. And when I would come to my mama, I'd hold my nose and I'd say, Mama, it makes me so sick to even smell it. And she said, Billy, if it don't make you sick, it don't do you no good. That's the way the preaching of the gospel is. If it don't stir up your innermost things, it don't do you much good. Pentecostal Christian women out on the street with slacks on. Do you know, lady, that the Bible says that a woman that will put on any garment that pertains to a man is an abomination? And little old clothes on shorts. And you get out in the yard just when the men are coming home from work. Do you realize that devil possession? Listen, lady. You wear these little old dirty clothes that you sell in these stores. Sexy looking. You might be as pure as a lily to your husband. But if you dress like that and get on the street and a sinner looks at you, you are guilty of committing adultery with that sinner. And that's the judgment bar you will answer for it. Jesus Christ, the blessed Son of the living God, said, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her in his heart. When that sinner answers for committing adultery, you are the one he committed it with. Well, you say, That's his fault. It's your fault. For presenting yourself like that. Oh, you say, but Brother Branham, they don't sell all the kind of clothes but them. Well, they still sell sewing machines and goods. I know that's old fashioned, but it's what the world needs today. God hates sin. But he loves the sinner. People just can't take it. That's all. You say, what about the man? All right, here you are. A man that'll let his wife dress like that 
and smoke cigarettes, it shows how much man you are. That's exactly what it is. You're supposed to be the head of the house. But you're not. <laughs> That's true. And the devil does that, trying to quench that holy thirst. If a man loves God, he can't love mammon at the same time. If you love the world or the things of the world, it's because the little love of the Father is not even in you. Now, do you see why we can't have a revival? You may not love me after this, but if a present boy, you know I told you the truth. What happened? There used to be an old Methodist preacher by the name of Brother Kelly. He used to sing a song. We let down the bars. We let down the bars. We compromised with sin. We let down the bars. The sheep got out. But how did the goats get in? You let down the bars. That's exactly right. Compromising with sin. Oh, God, be merciful. You know what the Bible said? Christ is your satisfying potion to every believer. It would be no mysterious thing to me if I went out in the country and seen a, a pig on a manure pile eating. That's his nature. But I'd sure be surprised if I saw a lamb eating with him. Right? The spirit in you bears record what you are. By the fruits you shall know them. Pentecost, we need a cleaning up from the pulpit to all the way to the base. That's for you Baptists too. Methodist, Presbyterian, a whole bunch of you. We need a house cleaning. God's holy fire. You got the fire in the basement when it ought to be on the altar in an every heart, not in the basement. We changed the upper room to a supper room to get enough money to pay the preacher. I'd rather lay on my stomach and drink French water and eat soda crackers and preach the truth than to have fried chicken three times a day and compromise with sin. Amen. Trying to quench that thirst that God put in you. Not to hear after a like author Godfrey or some of those other dirty mouth imposters. That's not real Americanism. That's hellishism. Right out of the bosoms of hell. No wonder our nation's gone. Such stuff as that. And it's drifted right into the church. The devil knows how to keep the children from the picture show he put it in the house with you. Right. You know that's right. Just let him listen to any old dirty things. All those old jokes and things that they tell. Bring up a child the way that you go. No wonder we got juvenile delinquency. No, we've got parent delinquency. We've got home delinquency. Junior's out somewhere with his hot rod on Sunday. Sister's down to a rock and roll and mom's out to a card party and, and dad's over to some kind of a poker game. And the church pews are setting empty because the blood of God has diminished from the church of the living God. You love God with all your heart, you won't do those things. Two. Another thing he tries to quench it with. He tries to quench it with letting you join church. Oh, you think, I belong to church. I don't have to listen to such stuff. You might not have to sit and listen to it. You could go out. But one day you're going to be judged by it anyhow. You'll have to stand for that. All this Tommy rock. John Church. Well, my organization has been a long time organization. It might have been that. That's no sign that you're secured. 
not a bit. Oh, how pitiful it is to see that blessed holy thirst that God put in the man to thirst after him and the devil perverting it to make you, oh, I belong to church. You ain't got no business telling me damn things, Mr. Branham. The Bible speaks of those things. And I'm a preacher and duty bound to God to explain them. Then the blood's off my hands. What happened to all the Pentecostal women in the wrong hair? That burned, didn't it? <laughs> but it's the truth. The Bible says this hair was given to a woman for a glory. So no, you don't have much more glory than you cut it off. You know that's true. What happened? You've got to look at too much of television. You've got to impersonate some movie stars, married four or five times, living with three or four husbands. Aren't you ashamed to quit that thirst after such scallywags and prostitutes as that and leave God's Holy Spirit right, breathe away from you? Certainly. Maybe I better quit a little. No, I'm not. Listen. It's got to be told. And it's the truth. Oh, if you'd only take God for your satisfying potion. If you'd only change all that coming up into a worship of a God. How the Holy Spirit sweep over my soul, sweep over my soul. And the church has got into the latest day and age just to beat a tambourine, beat a piano up and down, jump and shout and act like the world all the time. When the love of God constrains us to do that which is right. Yes, no wonder we're getting nowhere. No wonder gifts can't come in the church. God's got to have a foundation to put that church on. He's got to have a church to put those gifts in. He'll never put it into a bunch of stuff like that. It is true. All different. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm a family. I'm a church of God. What? What? Pop can't call kettle black. If you don't think you belong to Christ, you've got to love for the entire body of Christ. Whether he be Methodist, Presbyterian, similar to the church of God, or whatever he may be. Oh, David, when he cried out, I long to see thy spirit. I long to see thy glory like I saw it in the sanctuary. My soul cries for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. How that prophet saw this day. David over in Psalm 42, 1, he said, As the heart painteth after the water brook, so my soul thirst after thee, O God. Him being a woodsman, David was acquainted with nature. And the heart is a deer. Now I've seen it many times, been a hunter myself. They have a wild dog in Africa. And in America, it's the wolf. And this wolf is a sneaker. And when he gets to a place, he sees the heart, the deer. He slips up just as cunning as he can, keeping himself disguised. And that's the way sin does. Innocent. And when he gets a good shot at his prey, he runs and makes a jump, and he's got two things. They're called blood things. And he, his favorite place to grab the little deer is just behind the blur of the ear. He sinks his teeth deeply. The temple vein comes up the side, runs to his heart, and the wild dog grabs this deer and sinks his teeth into it and then swings his weight in front of the deer. When it does, those things slip the throat out of the deer. On the ground he goes, the little fellow's gone. The club spreading. Before he gets through kicking, there's 
dozens of dogs pick it into the bones. That's the way the devil does. Get you out some of you innocent kids. Try to let these long sideburns grow like Elvis Presley and a big bunch of hair sticking out the back of your neck and an old jacket on. God bless that man at that school not long ago that said, I'll close this school or you'll go home and come back dressed like gentlemen. Amen. When they dress like that, they act like that. That's trash on the street. And it isn't becoming even to a good citizen, let alone a Christian. And some of you little girls get out on the street and one of those wild dogs Give a whistle at you and you got yourself all poured into a bunch of scandal, dirty clothes. And your mammy home may be praying for you. And you'll give what they call the wolf whistle. And you turn around those little lips all painted up in tea, look around. You don't realize that's the wolf of hell after you. Just turn once and you'll get you to a rock and roll party and you're finished. By the way, speaking of that paint on the face, you Pentecostal women used to not do that. What happened? I'm just asking you. What happened? You did run well. What hindered you? Did your pulpit get weak? Then put him out and get a pastor to preach the truth. If your denomination let it let you down, get to another denomination. Certainly. Listen, sister, I don't mean to hurt you. I just come back from Africa. And in the heathen land. If that is a heathen trait, the hot and tops of Africa, that's where painting comes from. Heathens. It's a sign of Hellenism. And it's condemned by God. A pretty face ain't what God looks for. It's a pretty soul that he looks for. And listen, there was one woman in the Bible who painted her face. And her name was Jezebel. And God said it to the dogs. So you can see what a painted face woman is in the sight of God. It's dog meat. Now that's right. I don't say that for a joke. That's true. You can just figure God's got some dog bait going there. And the wolf of hell, you're baiting yourself so they whistle at you. Pick your bones to your no more than a street harlot. Though you could live just as clean your husband as you could be, you'll answer for committing adultery at the day of judgment. And you sons of God, let no wives do such a thing as that. Shame on you! I don't think there's much man in you. Man's not measured by a big pair of wide shoulders. That's brute. Man's measured by character. I've seen men that weigh 200 pounds and muscles like one of these mules out here and had no more man about him than to throw a baby out of mother's arms and ravish her. That's a brute. Man is character. God help us. That's first thing heard for God and not for the world. God be merciful. Then if this little deer is quick and the wolf grabs her, if he can't get by the ear and drag her in somewhere, he'll get her to fix her up and dress her herself. And the other hope on the wolf is to grab the little deer in the flank. If he misses the throat, the jugger vein, the quick kill, a cigarette, or a drink of whiskey, or rock and roll, he'll grab her by the flank, and then he throws himself, and that's the balance part of the deer. The hindquarters 
Our head is in the front quarters, so he can throw the deer. He's out of bounds. Now, if the little deer is quick, comes to herself, what happens? She can throw herself in such a way that the wolf will jerk a whole mouthful out of her flank. That's what David was talking about. Away she goes. Then she's all bleeding, wounded. She's been to a revival. And she comes wounded. And any hunter knows that if you wound the deer, and if you can get to water, you'll never get him. He'll run right straight to water. I've watched him many times. He'll drink, then run up and try to get away from the dog, come back, and he'll never leave that stream. As long as he can find water, he'll live. But if he can't find water, he'll die in a few minutes. That's the reason David said, As a, as a heart painteth by the water brook, my soul thirst after the old drop. Picture it. He must find water or die. Watch his little ears up. His heart beating fast. His eyes leaving him. His nostrils with every wit that he's got. Oh, the water, where are you? Where is the water? Here in the hound's house, he's got to get the water or die. Blessed be the name of our God. When the church gets to that place that has got to find Christ or die, you'll see a revival break out in the name. But not until. Not until that time. Oh, what God wants to do with his church. He sends us gifts. He sends us wonders. He sends us revival, and we just doze out on into the world. Come out this first. Just some time ago, I was in India, and the day before I come there, I got a piece out of the paper when I arrived the day before that, there was a great earthquake. And before that earthquake took place, you know what happened? Oh, now, India don't have fences like they do in Tennessee. They have big rock fences. And all the cattle and the sheep got away from those big fences and went out in the middle of the field right in the heat of the day and stood there. All the little birds that had their nests in the little coats in those fences and all those big high walls, they left their nests and went out into the forest and sat in the trees. What did it? And they stayed there until the earthquake was over. If not, they would have perished along those walls and those big towers. And brothers and sisters, let me say now, if God could give instinct to a bird to get away from danger to come, surely he could give it to man. Danger's at hand. Get away from these great, big old, cold, formal, starchy things. That's of the world. Get out and flee to the sinner of God's salvation, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and that plead for mercy. For destruction is at hand. When you see revivals and things going on like is going on now, just remember destruction comes. Jesus said himself, and that day when the Son of Man reveals himself from heaven, He's revealing himself now in mercy to his church. The next revealing of the judgment on those who rejected him. My soul thirsts after thee, O God. I long to see thy power like I have seen it in thy sanctuary. The real true servant of God is hungering and thirsting for God. The first move of the Spirit, their soul jumps to grab it. But those who are so indifferent, they see God perform miracles and do things like he's done when he was sure of the gospel being preached at that and shoot their chewing gum, stick your makeup on, say, yeah, I guess that's right. How can you escape the damnation of the wrath of God? Oh, you spoke for tongues, you said, so does Satan. I'm not against speaking in tongues. I know there's a real speaking in tongues, and there's a false one. Don't let the devil deceive you. You say, well, I shouted and danced in the spirit. I've seen witch doctors do the same in Africa and drink blood out of a human skull. 
Don't think that that's because you got it. When your life tallies with Christ, that's when you've got it. By the fruit, you shall know them. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, meekness, gentleness. Not grudges and fusses and fights and stews and arguments. See what you got out acting like the world, living like the world, and the coming of the Lord at hand. God be merciful, children. Satisfy that thirst tonight with Christ. How cold the church is, God. How it's cooled off. But that compares to Scripture. It's supposed to be that way. Here some years ago down here in the South, when slavery was legal, they used to go around and have brokers that would buy slaves, just like they do in automobiles today. And the automobile lot. You'd go buy an uh, automobile and take it over and sell it to another used car lot. They'd done slaves that way years ago. And there'd be brokers come by who would buy those slaves. And one day a broker come by a certain plantation, and these slaves were sold over here from Africa, and they were they would cry, they they wouldn't work, they were away from their home. They'd never go back no more. They'd never see their baby no more. They'd never see Papa and Mama anymore. They were come across the sea here on a wooden ship. They'd never go to the homelands again. So the owners would have to stole them or whip them and make them work. And one day this buyer come by. He said, I'd like to look your slaves over. He said, look them over. And he noticed the different ones, great sturdy ones and some small ones and so forth. How did someone out there making them work? And they had one certain young man there. He didn't have to make him work. Shoulders up, chin up, wash up. Anything you want done, you do it. He didn't have to whip him. He's right at it and do it. The slave buyer said, I want to buy that slave. And the owner said, but he's not for sale. He said, I've never seen quite a slave, as many as I thought, never seen one act like that before. Said, do you ever have to store him? Said, no, sir. He's always, oh, he's the best slave I ever owned. He said, I'll tell you what you've done. You've made him a boss over the rest of them. He said, no, sir. He's a slave just like the rest of them. He said, well, then perhaps you feed him a little better than you feed the rest of them. He said, no, he eats out in the galley with the rest of the slaves just like they all do. He said, well, what makes him so much different than the other one? He said, I often wondered that myself. Until one day I found out that over in the homeland where they come from, he's the son of the king. His father is the king of the tribe. And though he's an alien and away from home, he still knows that he's the king's son. He conducts himself like a king's son. God Almighty, be merciful. Though we are aliens in this dark world of sin and distress, we ought to conduct ourselves like sons and daughters of God, and we're not like the kings of the world. Our Father is the King. Why do we care about the devil's domain? Let's act like sons and daughters of God, taking his word and calling anything contrary as though it was not. Let's live and act and dress and talk and sing and shout and love the Lord and act like the Lord by believing his word. We are sons and daughters of the true and living King of heaven, God Almighty. My soul thirsts after thee and a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Think of it while we bow our heads just a moment. Listen, Christian, woman, man, since you have come to Christ, 
Are you conducting yourself as a Christian should? Are you got yourself off in some little denomination saying, me and my little group, we believe it this way. We'll have nothing to do with that or this, nothing to do with this or that. Oh, may God speak to your soul tonight. What can we do? The hour is coming when you're going to beg for this and you're not going to find it. Sinner friend away from God, little woman, little man, do you realize that you're trying to quench that thirst that God gives to you to thirst after Him? And you're quenching it with the devil's pleasures? Moses forsook Egypt to be Pharaoh of Egypt, esteeming the approach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he endured his seeing him who is invisible. Take off them clothes, lady. Put you on some decent looking things. Let your hair grow out and wash your face. You man get to be man. Walk out of pack of cigarettes in your pocket and a deacon on the board. Cigar, taking a little sociable drink, staying home and watching television, washing your car on Sunday instead of staying in Sunday school. Aren't you ashamed? Dear Heavenly Father, God, I don't want to be rude. Oh, oh, what can I do when my soul cries out, Lord? I think of the difference between now and just a few years ago when I was here at Chattanooga. What a falling away. What a difference. And my spirit grieves. Lord, here it is even just two more nights of the meeting and the little auditorium which was Packed and 1,500 turned away. And now something's happened. When the Spirit of God comes and reveals and shows His presence, the people set just as white and never seem to be thrilled about your spirit, just fire within them. Greedy selfishness, ministers that He's ever searched and Oh, Lord, what a condition. Be merciful, God. What can we do, Lord? Men and women that won't speak to each other because of denominational differences. Be merciful, God. We pray, Lord, for this call now. May there are souls that can remember a former day, that can read the Bible and know that God in his sanctuary. May their soul, soul thirst to be like that, Lord, and to see his great power displayed again. Grant it, Lord, many, many years become so cold and indifferent. So they really seem to think that they're doing all right. Shake their souls tonight, Lord, and may they smell the breeze from a cool stream of peace and ease. Long satisfy their thirsting and shrink their lives to thee again, Lord. Stir them up like the eagle does her nest. Make it so miserable for them that they'll be willing no matter who's sitting here, but they will be willing to come, raise their hands to thee and say, Wash the old Lord and try me. And if there be any fault in me, take it away and purge me, O God, while there is time for purging, while the fountain is open. Then, Lord, and while we're sitting in prayer and every head bowed, I just wonder how many of you and all of you sinner friends would you just raise your hands to Christ and say, be merciful to me, God, I'll raise my hands. Put up your hands. Or you do that, Lord bless you. God bless you. Up in the balcony to my right. 
put up the hand up there, sinner the friend. Say, I now will resign from sin. I accept Christ. I'm finished with sin. The balcony to the rear. Balcony to the left. Raise your hand. God bless you. Anyone on the sinner floor here? Raise your hand. Say, be merciful to me. God, I, I, God bless you, sir. God bless you. I now see my mistake. I've tried to go to Peru's brother Brennan. I've tried everything. I've joined church. I've done everything and nothing satisfied. I want to come to that place where I can have Christ as my satisfying portion. And you'll witness the same back to me by filling me with his spirit. I now accept him. I'm wanting to do it tonight. Another hand or two before we go further. God bless you, sir. Someone else? God bless you. God bless you, lady. Another? Be merciful to me, oh God, you pay. Anywhere in the building, before we close, God bless you, lady. Another? Just before closing now. I'm going to ask for you backsliders. The Lord, that you've done wrong. Aren't you ashamed right there? Who is it you're going to die? Is there something in you that's the weakest little boy speaking somewhere saying, Come to me, child? You can't die in this condition. If you do, you know you're doomed. Will you raise your hands and say, God, I'm not raising my hands to you. Say, be merciful me. I want to come back home, God, from the night on. I want to be satisfied and have that good feeling that I used to have and that real worship and fellowship where I just love to read the Bible and go to church and sing the old song. I want to have that again. Would you just raise your hand? God bless you, sir. It takes a real man to do that, brother. But I've got confidence in a man that has made a mistake and willing to confess that he's wrong. Now to you bunch of Christians, you women and men, that's trying to satisfy that holy thirst with things of the world. If you've got any real Christian principle and you're guilty, will you raise your hands to God and say, God, be merciful to me from the night on, I'm changing my ways. Raise your hands. God bless you. That's the way. That's the way to do it. Amen. The balcony to the right. Raise your hand. Come on, Christian. God bless you up there. That's right, man. I've got real, real confidence in you. The balcony to the rear. God bless you. That's good. Balcony to the left. Raise your hand. Say, from now on, God bless you. God spoke my heart. God bless you. That's right. Dozens of hands everywhere. I'm ashamed of my life. I've acted wrong. I know I'm wrong. But the way my hands have done that. How many of us never had the Holy Spirit? And you want the Holy Spirit to come to you now and to bless you and to give you, you've been up and down, up and down. Look like you, you're never on the house top for just a few hours at a time, and then the next day you're down in the dumps, as we call it. Then you, you'll never see me keep the victory that this halfway life. God don't want you to be like that. He wants you to be full of His grace and power all the time. God's got it for you. You won't accept it by just raising your hand saying, God, you see my hand. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, yes, yes. All around. Put up your hand and see how it feels. See, meet it from your heart. God bless you. That's right. God bless you. All around the balconies, I'm looking at you. But certainly God sees you if I don't. God bless you, sir. That's good. Oh, bless your heart. That's what Saturnism needs, is what the rest of the world needs. It's a revival. Are you all free as the Holy Spirit spoke just to a few more? Don't let it pass. You know, tomorrow may be too late. You may not be able to do it tomorrow. You see, you, you've turned yourself to call the sessions be, between churches and denominations and peoples and and all the luxuries of the world. The American people want to be entertained. They don't want the gospel no more. They want entertainment. And the devil's giving them all he can, just loving them all around everything. And they don't thirst for God no more. 
You used to think you were following you and your father the devil. But he said, you speak that against me, I'll forgive you. When the Holy Ghost comes and does the same thing, in other words, one word against it will never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. I may never see you again, but perhaps it's my last time in Chattanooga. We're too close to the end. I'm going overseas. One miracle that's performed in this meeting, one miracle that takes place of the German. I see one time it happened, and 35 rare heathens accepted Christ. I made one prayer, and 25,000 got to their feet, crippled, lame, and died, and was healed. And the next morning, seven truckloads of crutches and things going down the streets of Durban, South Africa, and the people walking behind and saying, and only believe. Oh, of course, we blind to the certain churches. We know better than that. Go ahead. That's the way it is. Go ahead. God's obligated to tell you, but you are obligated to what you say about it and do about it. If Christ the Son of God, which I know is present now, if His Spirit, how many have been in the meetings before and seen Him do it? Let's see your hands all over the building anywhere. If Christ the Son of God, He promised the things that He did, we do also. The woman touched his garment, and he turned around and said, Who touched me? He didn't know. He went to said that if he did know, and they rebuked him and said, All oh, touching him. He looked till he found who it was, and he told her what her trouble was, and she was healed. How many know that's the truth? Sure. The Bible said he's the high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities right now. Then if he's present. And if that part of the Bible is true, the rest of it is true. You without prayer cards, the other prayer cards will call them tomorrow night, maybe a whole group of you. I want those without prayer cards. Look this way and believe. How many of you out there know that I'm a stranger to you and don't know nothing about you? Raise your hands. Anywhere. I don't care where you are. All right, you believe. I don't say that he will. I trust that he will. At least give us three as a confirmation. What is it? I just yield myself to the Holy Spirit. Your faith touches Christ. Christ turns back and just uses my voice to speak to you. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. You know that, St. John 15? Then the branch bears the fruit, not the vine. The vine just gives the life to the, to the branch. And if it's a pumpkin vine, it'll give pumpkins. If it's a watermelon, it'll give watermelon. If it's grapes, it'll give grapes. If it's Christ, it brings forth Christ. If it's some stiff, starchy theology like they had back there, that's what it'll bring forth. But if it's Christ, it brings Christ. Do you believe with all your heart? Watch now when two stars or three call my sister. I can't make it. It's you. You look to Christ, the high priest, and say, Christ, I've understood night after night and seen those things done. Now, that man doesn't know me. And if you'll just speak to me, Lord, I'm sick. I need you. And just to confirm that you are here, I'm going to believe you with all my heart. Just believe with all your heart now and see if God will grant it. Here's a lady sitting looking at you right back here. Just moved her head back and forth just a moment ago. That's now you that moves your head down. You got a prayer card? You haven't. If God will reveal to me what your trouble is, will you believe God? You're sick. You want prayer, don't you? You prayed before you left home. That you would get to be in the prayer line. And when I said that a while ago, he said within your heart, I ask you, God, to let him call me. If that's right, raise your hand. All right? You have stomach trouble. If that's right, stand on your feet. You, you have no prayer card. We've never met one another in life. We don't know one another. If that's right, raise your hand. All right? You can go home now.
your healing. I just ask you to believe God. What about some of the rest of you people through here? Will you believe? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Little lady sitting right back there on the end of the road. You got spinal trouble, lady. Right down here. Do you believe? Have you a prayer card? You have a prayer card. Well, okay, I don't want that one. Your prayer card. Well, you've already been healed anyhow, so you just go ahead. You won't have to come in the prayer line. Somebody else, somewhere. I challenge your faith. Is that two or three? God, let us have one more. Three the confirmation. What you point with yourself for, sir? You sit to me sitting there? Man, point it to your chest? Have you a prayer card? You don't. You and I are strangers to one another. I suppose this is our first time meeting. God knows us both. If you reveal to me what your trouble is, would you believe me to be his servant? You will? You're suffering with sugar diabetes. That's right. You're not from this city. You're from Atlanta, Georgia. Your name's Mr. Adam. That's true. All right? Go home and be well, if you believe it. Do you believe God? Do you believe His presence is here? Then you people are best God. Then you are come up with all this. I want to ask you something just a minute before you do. Let's pray. Bow your head. Now is the time to be healed, no matter what's wrong with you. I want you to pray this prayer after me. You say the same thing I do. Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, all of everlasting life. Give us ever to give. Send mercy to me. To thy son Jesus. I now believe. Through the preaching of the word. Through the working of the spirit. I believe that Christ is present. I now accept him. As my healer, I'll serve you, Lord, as long as I live. And I promise you, from this night henceforth, I accept my healing, and I call those things that are as though they are not, because I believe your word. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now just keep shut in. Just keep shut in. Keep praying. That, that's your prayer. Did you mean it? If you mean it, you're going to see something happen in a minute that you've never seen before. His presence is here. I'm going to pray for you. You keep praying. I keep saying, Lord, you're coming in. I'm beginning to feel better. I believe the Holy Ghost is here. Something's happening to me. I'm going to pray for you. Lord God, it is written in the Word, and all these signs shall follow them that believe. It is also written, if you say to this mountain, be moved, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that them things that you say will come to pass, you can have what you say. Lord, 27 years I've tried to serve you, up and down the nation and around the world, if I found grace in your sight, Lord, see these people tonight as a real heart, doing preaching, rebuking them, but seeing their humble hearts repent. Show these people our presence, Lord, again. And let them know, even as we've identified yourself in our midst, not a dead Christ, not one on a cross, but one in the heart. That's raised from the dead and the life forevermore. Blessed be his holy name. 
I ask you to heal every person that's in the divine presence. And I challenge the devil in Jesus' name who cannot defy the word of God. For the word of God has defeated you, Satan, and you are with the very right that you ever had when Jesus died at Calvary. He gave us the keys to the kingdom, and you have no legal right in our bodies any longer, and we adjure thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave every sick person here, and every crippled person, every blind person, every deaf person, every lame person, every sick person, everyone. Leave in Jesus' name, I ask you to go. They shudder. You can see. I hope that I found grace in your heart. Keep your head down, people. I am your brother, and I'm telling you the truth. Christ, the Son of the living God, is in this building. There is a light. Hangs mirror. Beneath it is a little darkness. That's just a little suspicion. A little superstition. A little super just on each other. Touch that garment that hangs the first to you. Do it right now. You confess that you will. Believe it. And I want the first person that was deaf, dumb, blind, or crippled, that couldn't move a hand, maybe you couldn't move a hand, I want you to start moving it. You couldn't see out of one eye or an eye, look at these, you can see now. Couldn't move out of one ear, put your finger in your good ear, listen. The first one of you that feels that God is here with I want you to come with that one testify and tell the other. If there was something else, if you couldn't move your hands, move it. Move it in Christ's name, move it. Put your face to a test. If you can move it, rise up and come here. If you couldn't hear it, you can hear now, rise up and come here. If you were something with a headache, it's gone, rise up and come here. If you were sick at your stomach, and the sickness is gone for you, from you, rise up and come here. Here comes the lady now to give testimony. That's the way. Come up to the back door. Touch his garment. Anywhere. Well, what's wrong with you? Do you really believe it? He said you did. I'll speak to you. Christ speaks his word. Somebody else that couldn't hear or something? Come up. That's right, lady. Rise up. Come on. Someone else now. That's right. You couldn't walk? Come up now. If you took the speak, come up now and testify right here. You can do it. You're not afraid, are you? Are you afraid of what Christ did? Yes. What was wrong with you? If you were here, raise your hand. Line yourself up. Come up here and testify to the glory of God. Give God a chance to the glory of God. That's right. Come on. You didn't come in? You rise up first. Oh, I think that's God. That's the lady. You couldn't raise your hand. Raise it up. If he couldn't speak, scream hallelujah. Do you believe him? Are you just bluffing? Was he kidding Christ? Christ has to keep his word. How would I stand with that solemn fire tonight? If he didn't keep his word. Look at your head, maybe he's to die. Maybe some death, dumb, dumb. I don't know how the trouble was. Whatever your trouble was, come on, give God a chance. Testify. Raise that death to the police. Don't be ashamed. You ashamed your testimony? Come on. Father, it's time to give testimony. As they're rising, you people that raise your hands the right way, you want to do repent. You want to make the lives right. Come here, stand with us, and I want to pray for you. Come on out, come up this way. You that raised your hands a while ago, and you that know that you want to come and thank God for taking the temper away from you, taking the world away from you, you're going to dress different, you're going to act different, you're going to live different. You better come up here, be sincere. Stand up around the altar here. Now, I want you people to look there. I want you to minister. Can you see what fills the heart of a preacher? Can you see what fills the Holy Spirit when people raise their hands and they'll do that? And down and sit there and won't move? What's left of judgment? 
You cry someday when I'm gone. You remember that. I speak in the name of Jesus Christ. You will learn to hear these things and you'll never hear them. Come, I invite you in Christ's name. Was you shame your age for him? Then you wouldn't make a good Christian to begin with. That's all for you, but better for the time that the doctor was trying to take off the kid gloves and tell the truth. Christ is here. He's raised from the dead. He's present. That's the reason we feel all we do. Come on now. That's right. Raise up. If mama says, say, I'm for mama, you go with me. If husband says, she can't say, I'll leave you say, goodbye. Come on. We're going. That's right. That's the way we do it. Walk over to and give your personal testimony. Come down out of the balcony. You just went back to it. You just stand down. You want them with the guy with God. You just come in for testimony for healing. We're there to have a healing and die. They're standing there. You just kick your feet and do something about it. God's never going to find you up in there. You're going to walk on your own free will. Do you believe? Some of you get me here just as you're getting here. They're going to the line. Those who are running out of time with God is saying to the people who see who they were, that they were wrong, tell the church members, yes, what you are asking them to do is this. I'm what does she think? But ain't what she thinks is what does Christ think of you? You're so thirsty? Come on. There's the fountain open. Oh, really, lady. Come on now. There is the fountain. Hundreds held their hands. I wonder what happened. You're waiting for another chance. I hope you get it. You may not. Let me just drop this. It just keeps pouring through my heart, pouring through my heart. I gotta say, you are looking for a greater day, but this is your last one. This is the final call. Now you write that down in a book and see if you ever see things happen any greater than you see happen now. Just remember, you're trying to place it off somewhere else. You Gentiles had a short revival at the end. It's just about over. All right. You standing here around the altar. Everybody reverent. Are you ashamed of your lives? You want God to help you now. Be merciful. God bless you, this lady. Come right on. That's the way. The Lord be with you. God bless you, lady. I said, come right on up. This takes your stand. He that will confess me before man, whom will I confess before the Father and the holy angels? If you're ashamed of your lives and you want God to help you, will you just raise up your hands to me around the altar here? That's right. Be a real man and woman. And all your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Look at the testimonies of healing. They just keep, they just keep feeling the power of God moving through them. Ministers, sit around behind me now, each one of you. These men here are a man of God who has the churches here in the city. He's cooperating in this meeting. They're going to give you a hand. If you don't already belong to the church, you're just repenting, they'll quit your baptizing, Christian baptism. They'll take you into the church as the members of their church. They'll feed you, do what's right. They're a man who believes in this ministry. That's why they're here to represent. Now, everyone is concerned about these souls. Let's bow our heads just a moment. O oh, eternal and blessed God, these two little ones just come tonight. And it is written in the scripture, no man can come to me except my father draws him. 
And he that will come to me, I will in no wise cast out. There's men and women who sinned and did that which is wrong. They're standing here tonight repenting of their, their difference and being indifferent towards you. Some of them, no doubt, have made confessions in churches, but they've never lived up to that confession. Oh, blessed Holy Spirit, sweep into their souls just now and give to them the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Baptize them in my love and power. Oh, Lord, take away all ungodly things from them. Take the world out of them, Lord, that they might be presented to God that day by Jesus Christ, faultless and blameless, standing in his righteousness alone. Grant it, Lord. These ministers are standing around them, some of them have hands on them, and they're praying with them. The church has their heads bowed. We see your spirit as it moves through the building. It's bringing conviction. It heals the sick. We stand the world waiting for testimony. God, we pray that the Holy Ghost will now be brought down into this building like a resting mighty being. May it cleanse all their hearts from sin and give to these people. Fill their hearts with goodness. Take the world out of them, Lord, and let them thirst after thee. And thou hast said, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Then it, Lord, may they be filled with the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be your name. Each one of you standing here now that's considered as a sin, and you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ has come to you in peace and love, and you feel different than what you did when you come up here and just had this word of prayer. Will you raise your hand? You around the altar here? Just raise up your hand? That's good. God bless you. Now, minister friend, you walk out up to him and shake your hand. We we'll offer a little prayer with each one of them. Now, walk out up to him, you. Each one. Right up to him. All right? Let the lady in on here and raise your hand. Brother come here. I want to hear these testimonies now as you come. While these are making yourself welcome to their churches and so forth. All right, ladies, come out ahead now to get them.